Hello everyone and welcome to the Out of Office podcast. On this show we have conversations with industry led experts in the field of digital businesses. If you're just starting out or you want to scale your businesses, these conversations are going to help you greatly. Out of Office which is powered by Syncup aims to build the largest community for digital business owners. So if you want to be a part of it, click on the first link in the description. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hi everyone, my name is Nikhil Elawat and welcome to the Out of Office podcast. Today we have with us another very special guest, Ria Bhatia. Ria is a 20-year-old currently pursuing her English honors at Gurgi College, Delhi University. She is a content creator on LinkedIn and has amassed a following of 14,000 people. And she's popularly known as a hashtag everyday learning girl by her community. She has interned with some big names like the present Delhi government and under DU's vice chancellor. Ria is passionate about teaching and public speaking and she is also a foodie. Thank you so much for being here Ria. Thank you so much for having me Nikhil. So Ria, first question to you would be since you're a foodie, I want to know what is your favorite dish? Everything. You cannot have a favorite dish when you're a foodie. <laughs> That's it. So do you also like to cook? No. I just like to no. eat. <laughs> Just like to eat. All right. And also, like, Ria, I saw like a recent LinkedIn post of yours uh, about, you know, some cool alumni that your college has. So, mm-hmm. have you ever had the chance of meeting maybe Sanya Malhotra or Huma Qureshi or uh, Urvashi? No? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but All right. Well, so, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll visit the college because it's an, it's an amazing campus. I saw like the images online. And mm-hmm. uh, all right. So, we can get started. Right. Sure. Uh, so, Ria, my first question to you would be, uh, you have interned with, you know, DU's uh, vice chancellor. For people who mm. don't know about the internship and, you know, what all it entails, can you tell us mm. what the internship was exactly about and how did you back it? Right. So, uh, first things first, this internship is primarily for the students of Delhi University only. <clears throat> So the main uh, theme behind this uh, internship is that while you study, you can also earn. So it's like learn and earn scheme uh, okay. offered by the University of Delhi. So right. uh, basically I got to know through this about uh, Instagram itself. There was a brochure that was out. I was scrolling and I got to know about it. So basically yes. the uh, this time there were around 5,000 students and around 140 students were shortlisted in the end to pursue the internship. So I okay. think you are... So, yeah, it's a tough competition, but then you get to uh, intermingle with the best minds of the university and you get to mm-hmm. be part of an area where no other students are allowed to be. You get to work with the top tier professionals of the university because of whom essentially the university is running. So, yeah, you get right. different, different domains according to your course, the PR, finance, etc. So, they, all all, right. they, give, they give you a course, they give you a domain which you can work in. And you have, it okay. depends, like if you are doing a summer internship, so it's for two month period, but if you're doing it mm-hmm. otherwise part-time work like I am, so it's, it yeah. entails for six months. Yeah. So it's hybrid. Okay. I think it's very flexible and you are, yeah. you're earning while you're learning. So it's a win-win situation for the student. All right. So what domain are you working under right now and what responsibilities do you have under this internship? So I am currently in the public relations domain. Um, so, uh, what we do is the handling the ins and outs of the Delhi University, what goes in, what news comes out, etc. You know, uh, working with uh, professionals who are uh, essentially handling the journalist, journalism part of the Delhi University, scanning through the newspapers, maintaining files, records, etc. Okay, okay. Alright, pretty interesting. Also, you have, uh, like, I-, I saw it on your LinkedIn as well. You also bagged an internship, you know, with the Delhi government uh, under Aam Aadmi Party. So tell me what that experience was like. How did you come across that internship? And again, how did you bag it? So I think that was the first internship of my life. And it was essentially got that through because I was in FOMO. I was on LinkedIn and I was seeing everybody doing internships, having fancy names associated with themselves. So I thought that I should also have one. But I think it was a good FOMO to have. Uh, yeah. so, so I was figuring out how to apply for internships etc etc and that was when I came across Internshala as the platform and I think the name is very obvious for a student to know that it offers internships so mm-hmm. I went through Internshala you know uh, figured explored it out and made my profile and saw that mm-hmm. Aam Aadmi Party is offering internships in different domains uh, mm-hmm. 
that's when i applied uh, that's when i made my profile there and applied for the content writing internship and i okay. think since the very start uh, that internship has been like out of my out of my imagination while internship because yeah. uh, will you believe it if i say that my interview was in an auto i mean i submitted my application uh, uh, on the yeah. platform then i got yeah. a call i didn't know what the further process was so the second round when your profile gets shortlisted is basically a telephonic interview i was coming back yeah. from my college i was in the auto and they said like hello i'm speaking this this is from aam aadmi party this is your interview mm-hmm. call and i was like shit oh. i am in an auto i cannot tell the bhaiya to stand mm-hmm. and wait as i like, i don't know how long will it go so i yes. like, ma'am i'm in an auto i don't know if you will get my voice properly or not and she was yes. like it's okay I'm, it's fine right now and yeah. the interview happened and then another interview when you get shortlisted there okay and then it was very good i mean i got to learn a lot about twitter the algorithm how twitter uh, tweets etc how to be written the nitty gritties it was very good and the best part was that it was work from home and yes. i had to dev- devote not more than 45 minutes to 1 hour in a day so i think it was okay. not all thing and was a great experience I mean, what else could you ask? All right. So, was this? I I agree. I think this is the best internship. Uh, you know, person who's just starting out can have. Uh, and uh, for like, uh, just for my information, was this like a paid internship that you had? No, this was unpaid. This was unpaid. All right. And what uh, exactly were you writing about, like, when you were doing content writing? So it's a political organization, and we were supposed to write about what the party. was doing what the party was launching because at that time elections were going on in different states so running yes. those campaigns and mm-hmm. uh thoda bahut about other parties as well you can understand mm-hmm. right so yes. that and yeah uh okay. about the campaigns elections etc like a- anything and everything that was related to the party was supposed to be written all right i think this is a pretty unique you know internship to have so i i would like to ask you you know how has this internship been different then you know all the other internships that you have you know done or been a part of i think this internship taught me something very important that you might have a inclination towards something towards some organization towards some party but then at mm-hmm. times you are put in situations when you have to keep your inclination aside when you have to keep your likings aside and do work mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. even if i am not not a app supporter or i am doesn't matter mm-hmm. if i have yeah. got to be, uh, got to be working with such a big name i for mm. once have to keep my likings and dislikings aside you know as this yeah. beggars are not choosers and i think when you're a student you have to have mm. that attitude that you can do anything you have mm. to keep your plates full so that you get a full experience so i think yeah. that was my biggest learning here that you have okay. to keep your likings liking likings and dislikes dislikings aside and focus yeah. on work okay all right All right. Uh, also, Rio, you've done like a lot of internships. Now you've d- done some like crazy internships, which uh, you know hold a lot of value. I want to ask you that: What do you think are the primary skills that you know employers look for in an intern when they are applying? I think one number one primarily is your preparedness. How prepared you are for the organization. So when I say that my call was on, uh, my interview was in an auto. there was no chance that i could google things up you know mm-hmm. so i have if so if the moment that i applied for a particular internship i have to know about the organization because any assignment can pour in any time with the shortest deadline right so i yeah. have to know about the organization i the, mm-hmm. that's what they look for basically they they should know how interested you are when i was giving yeah. my uh, panel discussion for vice chancellor internship as well they they wanted us to speak how much we knew about the university how well aware we are, were about our surroundings so how mm. prepared you are for about yourself about the organization secondly yeah. how well can you read the interviewer is also very important i mean is the interviewer mm. very serious wants wants you to be very precise and to the point or is a little jovial mm. relaxed you have to read the interview yeah. and mold yourself accordingly and okay. lastly your resume the applications that you submit basically the assignments should be what the interviewer wants to look for because that's yes. when you get selected and shortlisted for further rounds all right okay 
Okay, and uh, you you mentioned that you know you found your uh, Aam Aadmi Party internship through Intern Shala. So, uh, if like for people who are just starting out and they want to do internships and they want to get like good quality internships, which platforms would you suggest they start out on? Should it be like LinkedIn or freelance media? Yeah. Yeah. So there are three, four platforms. Intern Shala, one. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Second, definitely. Uh, I think I've, I'm. I'm starting to explore Unstop. It's another great platform okay. for us too because you name a big company and I think it's listed there. So uh, oh. Unstop is another great platform. Intern Shala, LinkedIn oh. uh, through the job portal, and then lastly through cold mailing, you can crack mm-hmm. any and every internship that you like if you're doing it right. Okay. Okay. and also like one very frequent question that i think uh, people have in their minds when they are applying for internships is that are my grades important do i need to have good grades if i have a bad grade will i not get an internship what is your opinion on that so i think it depends from internship to internship when i speak of a uh, delhi university's vice chancellor internship having hmm. a certain cgpa above 7.75 was important for you to hmm. register yourself for the internship So, okay. but for other internships, when you're cold emailing somebody, when you're sending a personalized mm. invite, I don't think mm. grades. They would look for your grades, and instead they would look for your skills, your experience, etc. Right? Yeah. So, they do matter, and it's best that you keep them in track because even if the interviewer is not looking for your grades, and you mention mm. that you have a certain good percentage, it just yes. gives you brownie points, right? So, why not yeah. have a good grade? A good academic record, absolutely. And what about extracurricular activities? Do you think that they have an effect on uh, getting a good internship? Hundred uh, percent. So when I say that I was doing a PR internship, they ask for your previous mm-hmm. experience. Now, how I have been? Uh, now I do have some experience through particip through you know organizing events in my school or through being part of college societies, reaching out to uh, dignitaries, etc. right so yeah. when you do extra curricular activities in different domains content writing for your society's instagram page it plays yeah. these small things which might not reward you initially they'll give you mm. 10 times uh, benefit in the future so i think mm. doing things in your school in your college at the beginning it's very important because these extra curricular activities add up in the end because that first Absolutely. internship yeah in that first internship you do not have Uh, other internships uh, experience mm-hmm. as such, right? Yes. So you need to have those extracurricular activities ka backing up so that you can uh, grab that first internship. Absolutely, and I think these extracurricular activities are not only important to show on your CV. I think they also build your character, they build your personality, and they boost your confidence, right? So they are definitely very important. And uh, also, uh, Ria, like when you like. Uh, applied for you know for the DU Vice Chancellor internship or Aam Aadmi Party internship. I'm pretty sure there were thousands of applications and CVs that you know came to the employers. So uh, how do you think you can make your CV stand out from a crowd? Any opinions? Any tips and tricks for that? I think uh, until unless you're applying for a design internship, the simpler you keep it, the best it is. and it goes without saying that it has to be a one page cv no matter yeah. how much experience you have uh, a one page cv very well organized very well structured all the margins mm-hmm. align these small things which we might think do not matter but they do matter because it just take 2 seconds for your cv to be left swiped right so yes. not not a single grammatical error and having those proper columns it should there should be a uniformity there should be a proper format from your beginning from your name to your academics to your uh, experience etc highlighting uh, the highlighting the main things that you want the uh, recruiter to see mm-hmm. and lastly i feel when i was uh, in the process of learning uh, of making a cv one thing that i realized is that your your cv score really improves when you add numbers to it so how can you quantify your experience is very important you you did work in pr that's good but how can you quantify it how many how say let's say how many i scanned 15 newspapers per week so having yeah. that number is very important yeah. it improves your cv score absolutely and any opinion on people who add like uh, fake skills or <laughs> untrue experiences on their cvs uh <laughs> If I may be allowed to share a, a small experience, so this was a society yeah, sure. interview, 
it okay. was a it was a society interview and uh, mm-hmm. my seniors asked me uh, i was in first year so my seniors asked yeah. me uh, have you applied for any other societies and i was in a i was in the first year not having much experience knowledge so that yes i i applied to three other societies the results yeah. for two are yet to be out and for one i'm already in so they said okay yeah. you basically have applied for four societies including ours so what is your priority and i was yeah. giving the interview and i didn't know that i had to say that yes your society is my number one prior- priority because yes. you are innocent in your first year you do not do yes. things right so yeah. i said yeah. that uh, i said uh, this society particularly is not my first priority i was honest mm-hmm. and blunt as right on the yeah. face and uh, i got into that society finally because they like your honesty so you have to be honest whether it's an interview whether it's your cv you cannot yeah. just because at the end of the day things do come out if you if an, if the recruiter yeah. is not mad he is the recruiter he is sitting there to interview you he knows how to control the narrative so you have to yeah. have that honesty within you and even if it comes out of innocence even if it comes out of stupidity whatever be honest yeah. absolutely in the end honesty is definitely the best policy and i think people do like people put like fake experiences and stuff on true experiences because i think they just they just want to get in but i feel mm-hmm. like if you're honest and you show like a willingness willingness to learn and improve i'm pretty sure like you will get through and then you can you know build on your experiences all right perfect okay. um uh, yes uh, so ria like apart from the internships that you're doing and you know managing college and stuff what are you currently focusing on uh, like in freelancing if i may uh so freelancing right now at the moment i'm not doing but then i have freelanced for a couple of months i was working uh, with an agency and um, mm-hmm. i have done ghost writing uh, to be particular and yes. to diff- from from politics to uh, entrepreneurs have uh, written for uh, different different fields mm-hmm. right yeah. so yeah all right so uh, like for people who are like still unaware about you know what ghost writing is could you explain it like just quickly what it includes like the services it includes so ghost writing is basically uh, writing for someone uh, you write but the credit goes to that person your you mm-hmm. are just you're working at the in at the back stage you you do not have your name associated with that piece it goes mm-hmm. in the person's name that you're writing what you what you gain is uh, that inner satisfaction i think that ghost writing gives you if that piece uh, gets uh, boomed up so yeah and you earn money okay. yeah and you earn money absolutely uh okay so uh, you know i've spoken to a couple of uh, ghost writers uh, now ria and one thing that i want to uh, you know know is that uh, when you're like working with a client and you you know you're writing on behalf of them how important is it to know their tonality their voice uh write better do you think that it affects it should affect or you should include that when you're writing i think you should know that person 99% that that person's narrative what they stand for what their vision is what their company is about in order mm-hmm. to produce a good ghost writing piece because at the end of the yeah. day you are writing so your style of writing will never go out of it right mm-hmm. there will always be that little sprinkle of yours but yeah. you're writing for somebody else you have to realize that and you have to mm-hmm. ask them a lot of questions in order to understand them fully so it's very yeah. important that you maintain their style because only that, that's when they like your content they'll want you to pay they'll want you to continue writing for them so know yeah. them is very important okay okay yes and um really you've done like so many internships you know you've done course writing on the side uh you are very active on linkedin you're producing content there um uh, i want to know how did you develop all these skills was it something that you know you uh, like did you take a course did you learn it from like a youtube creator or did the journey teach you what you know today i think i really pride myself when i say that i haven't taken a course in my life a single course in my life yet because okay. i mean there's so much content on youtube there's so much there's yeah. so many good people on linkedin you find it you get it yeah so you don't Absolutely. necessarily have to spend your money on buying a course i mean that's my opinion i can get backlash for that but yeah. no problem uh, yes. so yeah i've not taken a course yet it's all mm. uh, everything i've learned on in my journey figuring out seeing what other people are doing trying to uh, imitate that with my own uh, sparkle as i call yeah. it as i said in my linkedin post adding my own uneness right yeah uh, so, yeah i've learned right. everything 
myself on the way. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think this is like the golden age of information. You know, information value is everywhere. People are giving it out for free. And you, if you don't have the money to purchase courses, there's still so much that you can learn for free. So I think mm-hmm. this is like the best age to live in, and uh, you should make use of it definitely. But like how you mentioned, like you have been following people. Do you think that uh, you could name a few people whom you have been following and who have taught you a lot in your journey of you know content writing or ghost writing or just on LinkedIn? uh to mention a few creators from linkedin because that's where i am the most active i think yeah. there's this one uh, person called achutya bhidu uh yeah. he i have I, i think i've seen him since the very start of my linkedin journey and yeah. uh, he has been producing content every day without stop that motivates yes. me a lot and his and the value that he provides is insane immense so, uh, yes yeah so uh, that and a few other creators uh, to name a few i think um, i've learned a lot from uh, from myself and like myself <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely i mean you also produce amazing content and there's a lot of value in it so you should name yourself absolutely <laughs> okay so uh, ria i found you through linkedin i have been you know consuming your content i've been observing your journey tell me what role has linkedin played for you and what all have you learned from it i think linkedin has been that one uh, game changer element in my life when you say that uh, that ground breaking moment that path breaking moment your first breakthrough that's what linkedin yeah. gave me i uh, in uh, to in in simple terms it made me more observant and patient be patient mm-hmm. with the views be patient with the likes followers and when you do that when you are with it on the journey when you are patient observant you get a lot yeah. of rewards sitting on this podcast yeah. right now is a reward for me because had it yeah. had it not been on linkedin i couldn't have been here right uh, gaining Absolutely. a magazine feature being invited mm. to triple it for a linkedin personal branding session uh, yeah. and being on other podcasts as well it's all because yeah. of linkedin having LinkedIn. the network that i have right now being with uh, yeah. being uh, being Uh, being friends with co- college students, being friends with people from different countries all together, uh, sitting yeah. with uh, sitting networking calls with them, I think LinkedIn yeah. has a lot to offer when you utilize it, when you leverage it very properly. So uh, it has definitely all been right. a very crucial role in developing me. Yeah, that's that's so good to hear, uh, Ria. And you have like built a name for yourself on LinkedIn. You have fourteen thousand followers. So I would like to ask you, like, when did you start like posting on LinkedIn? How long has it been uh, for you on the platform? Exactly this time and year before. It's I think I've been a year back of consistent posting. I was there before, but I wasn't posting very consistently. But if I okay. have to like say it properly, then it's been one year. One year. All right. Okay. So, uh, like, three tips that you would like to give to people who are trying to grow an audience on LinkedIn. What are like the f- top three things you think they should focus on to, uh, you know, drive that engagement, get more followers, and build a name for themselves? Number one, uh, do every do everything opposite of what you read on LinkedIn. They'll say you post, <laughs> post, post okay. five times a day to engage one hour every day. No, yeah. you have to do it at your pace. That's number yeah. two. Do it at your pace. Do not yeah. let anybody drive you how you have to yeah. do things. be mm-hmm. what you are and that's how you mm-hmm. do it third yeah. i wouldn't the mundane advice of being consistent engaging regularly i think mm-hmm. that's not negotiable you have to do that but then yeah. uh, third thing as i always say maintain your uniqueness don't try yes. to imitate others always always add your sprinkle because that's when you uh, that's when people begin to like you i've seen people you know that thing people say that do not rant keep your post mm-hmm. to the, to to the point right but then there yeah. are people who give a little back story their their posts are little longer but then thousands mm-hmm. of they get thousands of like people like to read it because i think they over time have built their uniqueness and that's what yeah. people right people <clears throat> like yes absolutely yeah no i i feel like linkedin i like even written it in like one of my posts it's like a sea and there are like a lot of fishes in it you're like one of them So you can't, you know, like follow the school. Always, you need to like find your own feet. You need to have your own identity. And, and I agree with you. Like all advice on LinkedIn is not always true. Uh, like I myself have not. I face like this problem in being consistent. And sometimes, you know, you're too hard on yourself. 
but like then mm. you need to remind yourself that you know you have everybody has their own pace so mm. um, so ria like this one year what all kind of content pieces have you like written like because people say that you know you should put uh tofu bofu i don't know what that is i've forgotten <laughs> but you should put like content that drives leads and stuff so tell me what kind of content have you been posting for like a year on linkedin i think that depends on your goal so when i yeah. started out my goal was not freelancing i happened to yeah. get into that along the way right so my goal mm-hmm. was not freelancing so I, i didn't post anything related to tofu mofu bofu as you said yeah. uh it's basically it's basically It depends on your goal so i was just a college student trying to figure it out what linkedin is right so i posted yeah. wh- how my day was like what book did i read what is mm-hmm. my learning what what something different that i observed while i'm way back on metro that's what yeah. i did initially but when you are consistent in posting when you push yourself a bit to write mm-hmm. every day i think you figure out your niche essentially yes. it's not important to have a niche but then you figure it out along the way and i think it for me it has boiled down to now uh, posting about linkedin itself criticizing a lot of popular practices on linkedin uh <laughs> then i have been i post or post uh, alternatively about little motivational stuff etc and yeah. uh, the last uh, share of my content goes on college related stuff those are my okay. three content pillars All right, that's quite refreshing to know because I think a lot of people like who are starting out on LinkedIn, they are like, you know, nobody cares about how my day went or nobody cares about my struggles and stuff. So this is like a good reminder for them that you know, just start and you will eventually, you know, find your niche. Absolutely. Um, okay, so Ria, like this in this one year journey or like since you know you started college, uh, you got these internships, you've done a little bit of freelancing. How has this journey changed you? How has it shaped you? Uh, do you feel any different since you know when you started? I think every day when you try to push yourself to do something else to apply for that internship to write that post you meet a little new version of yourself and in the pa- and if i see today riya from the 1st february 2023 and riya from 1st february 2024 is are two different people altogether right today yeah. i see myself a little more, little more mature than i was i see myself yeah. having conversations with intellectual minds i see myself not gossiping about things i see myself not <laughs> scrolling reels all the time i yeah. these, though, these are little changes which surely develop you in the long run yeah. right so having yeah. that mindfulness having that maturity is what yeah. i is something that i see in myself all right that's that's very nice to hear you don't like you don't enjoy gossiping anymore I mean I I would but that's very lim- that's very limited right now with only you don't have time for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think you have a lot of free time but then I really try to stay away from gossiping because it does no good. Yeah, it never brings any good. That's at that I can I can say that. Absolutely. All right, okay. What about your parents? Have they like observed any changes in you since you started? What is their reaction to you know whatever you're doing? I honestly haven't seen any reaction from them as such a, a reaction to <laughs> something that I call as a reaction because all of yeah. this is very new to them. I am the first one in my uh, like the first kid going to college as in not not that oh. my parents haven't gone to college but in the sense that okay. after, because the time that they went and this time right now are two different times yeah. altogether right so yeah. uh, going to college आस्किंग दैम कि पापा मेरी इन ऑफिस वाली इंटर्नशिप है तो मुझे कॉलेज के बाद ना वहाँ पे भी जाना होगा सीकिंग परमिशन फ्रॉम एम टू वो डिफरेंट प्लेस थिंग्स आर नीड फॉर देम एज राइट फोन पे क्या करते रहते हो सारा टाइम मम्मा इज ऑलवेज स्कोल्डिंग मी एंड मतलब दे विल अंडरस्टैंड इन इन देयर ओन वे विद देयर ओन टाइम सींग पापा टुमोरो आई हैव अ पॉडकास्ट शूट सो टेलिंग दैम दीज थिंग्स एंड with time they are really getting happy they like ha huh, okay yeah. okay we are waiting for 50000 followers etc yeah. so they are happy yeah. they are pushing so, me as well but they are not uh, allowing me to uh, uh, keep my feet away from the ground right so yeah yeah as parents typical indian parents typical indian parents absolutely like i mean i understand you know where they are also coming from because all of these things are new for them absolutely mm. and suddenly like after covid this surge of you know remote jobs and people like doing freelancing and stuff it is it's very new even like for us us uh, so like 
um yeah that's that's great to know it's very heartwarming and you know typical indian parent stuff uh okay so riya my next question to you would be um any time management tips that you have for college students or school students because it's not easy to handle so much right uh so like what is one time management tip you would like to give to all college students out there and how you know they can optimize their day i think just get things done because yeah. the more you procrastinate not that i do not procrastinate i'm not a time management guru or something but then just yeah. get things done uh eventually you will see that even if you are doing a lot of things you still mm. will have time left in your hand so if yeah. things are there on your plate just get them done one by one there's no yeah. point in sitting in the blanket all day long binging netflix get things done <laughs> that's the only thing that i'll say all right just start just start basically <laughs> just start all right okay perfect so i think riya this brings us to the last segment of our podcast which is the rapid fire round so that the audience knows you a little better and even me so are you ready are you ready for the rapid fire yeah. all right perfect okay so my first question to you riya is coffee or tea neither neither <laughs> why <laughs> I don't know. I haven't have. I mean, I do not drink that since the childhood. So, I don't think I have. Or is it? Do you like have milk? Do you prefer milk or something? No, I mean, I do not need to have a drink. No beverages. My yeah. All right, that's that's good for you because like if I don't have tea like in the morning, then I'm just like yeah, I'll not do anything all day. So, all right, okay. <laughs> Dogs or cats? Neither. <laughs> I do not like animals. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't like any animal. <laughs> yeah, people will just close this podcast right away. <laughs> I mean, I have had such horrific experiences with dogs that you name an animal. I have had experiences. So I'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> or I will have a conversation about that someday later. Like, okay, all right. A uh, rainy day or sunny day? Do you prefer rain or like a warm sunny day? I think I like rains. Yeah. Rains. It's all right. Choice. Okay. Okay. One movie you would recommend everyone should watch. Mm, Three Idiots, an all-time evergreen film. Absolutely. One book everyone should read. Think Like a Monk by Robin Sharma. By Robin. No, so Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. I'm sorry. Yeah, by Jay Shetty. By Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty. All right. Okay. Okay. What is your biggest fear? I think it's going to be dogs or cats. Uh, no, they're not no. the biggest fear. <laughs> Fear number two. Fear number one. Yeah, number one fear: not being able to see myself where I see myself, not being able to do things that I know I can do. Yeah, that's my biggest right. fear. Not okay. living up okay. to your own expectations. <laughs> What is one superpower you would like to have? To extend the twenty-four hours in a day. I need more time. I know that is such a good that is such a good one because like twenty four hours are also less yar in a day like like you just get up and like the day is over. Okay, anyways, all right, good one. That's that's a good one. All right, okay. If you could go back in time, like okay. if you could go just like one year back, what advice would you like to give to your younger self? No advice. I want myself to be the way exactly I was so that I can be here the place to be here that that I am right now. Yeah. All right. Because that's where wow. the growth happens. You should not correct your. You should le- can learn from your mistakes. Don't try to reverse your mistakes. All right. That's extremely wise and a beautiful answer. Uh, all right, Ria. I think that brings us to the end of the podcast. Thank you so so much for being here. It was really lovely interacting with you and uh, very refreshing. Very refreshing, I would say. And uh, all of uh, Ria's social links will be down in the bio, so you can follow her everywhere. You should because she produces amazing content. Hi guys, just a quick reminder: if you want to be a part of the free community, you can do that by clicking on the first link in the description. By doing that, you will get free access to a lot of masterclasses and like-minded people. Hope to see you there.